Hello, this um, video is for BTEC Sport and Exercise Science and is the first of several for Unit 2 Functional Anatomy. Now the purpose of this video is to introduce um, the Learning AMD skeletal system. So let's have a look at the skeletal system. So hopefully you have a little bit of background um, from school and you will understand that the skeletal system is essentially the bones of our body. So we will be learning about how bones are constructed, how they grow, and obviously the names of them, the different types of bones, and the joints of the body. So again, there are different kinds of joints or categories or classifications of joints, different types of joints as well. We need to know the names of them. We need to know how they're structured and how they work. Anatomy more broadly, in all of the topics, in all of the body systems, will require you in our spec to understand how each system is structured. So we mean by structure, how are the things built? So how are they built? How are they, how are they made, if you like? For example, if we look at short bones, now there are going to be some phrases that I really want you to sort of, um, as we work through the different topics, hold on to as descriptions of structure. So here we have short bones. Short bones are cuboid in shape. That means they look like a cube or a dice. They are as wide as they are long. Now, these little phrases are the sorts of phrases that in an exam question are great, are the sorts of things or the sorts of descriptions that we want you to be able to use. So short bones are structured like a cube, as wide as they are long. Then we might also need to know literally what they're built of, what they're constructed of. And you will eventually understand that there are two types of bone tissue. Now, this outer layer of a typical short bone is made of compact bone tissue. And the inside is made up of this honeycomb type of cancellous bone tissue. So it's called cancellous bone tissue. And those phrases describe the shape and structure of short bones. We also need to know in all of the body systems how each bit works as well. So it's built like this. What job does it have? Um, or how do they work, depending on the topic? So what is the function of short bones then, as an example? So short bones are strong and effective for load bearing and absorbing forces. Now, because of this structure, because of this structure and design, our short bones are really good for dealing with big forces. Now, we'd find short bones in our wrist and in our heel, our heel bones here. So all of these little bones, they're not perfect cubes, but they are loosely speaking cuboid, squarish, and they are short bones. Just on a note, that the rest of the bones in your feet, your toes and your the sort of base of your foot is not, are not short bones, they're long bones, even though they're tiny. So these are short bones, our tarsals, and the talus is one example of a short bone. It's the bone that makes up the joint between our uh, tibia and fibula, our ankle joint. Our calcaneus, this heel bone here, is also a short bone. Obviously, it's a bit bigger, but it's roughly cuboid in shape. Okay, so bear in mind, you'll always need to be understanding and knowing how things are built and what job do they have to do. Let's like a, have a look at exam questions then. So the exam paper is a lot of short answer questions, which might be one mark, two mark, three mark, four mark, possibly five mark, um, plus some longer questions, which I'll look at in a moment. Short answer questions will probably give you a little bit of information. In fact, all of the questions quite often give you a little bit of information already as part of the question. So this example says there are three classifications of joints that means there are three sort of categories of joints. Synovial and cartilaginous are two of these. You might know these as freely movable or slightly movable. So those are two of the classifications. So the question itself is, describe using the example the third classification. So the information in the question has given you two of the three, and it's asking you, what's the third? And give an example. So hopefully you might know, oh, and by the way, this is for four marks. So this is an example of the mark scheme. It gives some guidance on what marks might be given for, and then it gives you options. So 
you'd get a mark for saying the third kind or classification of joint is a fibrous or fixed joint. An example is the cranium. So the flat bones of your cranium are all sutured together by fibrous joints. And what it then, you know, to earn your four marks, you need to give a little bit more because it says describe them. It doesn't just say state what the classification is. It wants some detail about the third classification. So what you'd also need to do to earn your four marks would be to say there is no movement at these joints. Um, that's, that's how they're structured because they are fused together with connective tissue between these flat bones. And the, the function of these fibrous joints or fixed joints is to protect. In this example, the cranium protects the brain. The mark schemes might give you different examples as well because they do accept alternative answers. As you can see here, they accept any other appropriate example or answer or bit of information. So you could have said, Fibrous joints are the third classification, for example, the pelvis. So these flat, there are about three flat bones that make up the pelvis. Um, and again, they don't allow movement. So they're structured to allow no movement. They're immovable. And their job is, their function is to protect the reproductive organs inside your pelvis. So that's an example of short answer exam questions. This is the question. Always check the marks. What does it want from you? And make sure you account for that in your answer. Long answer questions then. So the two long answer questions that are most relevant to the skeletal system are question 11 and 12, which are the final two questions in the exam paper. Now, question 11 will almost always be phrased like this. You'll get a picture of somebody doing something, a movement, and they'll use these phrases. Analyze how the axial and appendicular skeleton, so those are sections of the skeleton. It might just say appendicular skeleton, but this example says both. Allows the range of movement necessary up to the shoulder, trunk, and wrist. So it will always give you three joints, and it wants you to write about those three joints. To achieve the position shown from standing to the forward bend. So ultimately, this question 11 which is a movement analysis question, wants you to discuss these two parts of the skeleton and how these three joints in this movement from standing to bending forward allow movement to happen. This question, you must note from the start, only requires you to talk about the skeleton, the skeletal system. So it is only requiring you to give information about the skeletal system. Question 11, always only about the skeletal system in these questions. Always phrased like this, always has a picture. And it's always worth 11 marks. And from the start of the course, we are going to drill how to approach question 11 so that we get really brilliant marks on it because it's almost predictable. You obviously have to know your jo joints and all the associated information, but what it's going to ask you to do is predictable. The other longer question relating to the skeletal system is this. So it, it, this is question 12, basically, which is also a movement analysis question. And it will always be phrased in this way, similar, but slightly different. So it's now asking you about a movement. Analyze the required movement of the left elbow, right hip, right knee. So again, it's asking you for three specific joints linked to the picture to achieve the position from preparation to execution. So this is the preparation position. This is the execution position. And it's guiding you towards the shaded limbs, which are the ones it's wanting from you, the left elbow, the right hip, the right knee. Now, the difference is, question 12, because it wants you to um, analyze how you achieve this movement, not just the range of movement, but how you actually move, is both the skeletal and the muscular system. So you'll do the same analysis here in question 11 and 12, but in question 12, you add on extra information about the muscular system. And because of that, because you're having to do more in question 12, it's worth always 14 marks. So again, we are going to drill these from the start so that you are amazing at question 11s and 12s and get really high marks because we kind of know what's going to be asked of you. 
Now, just to evidence how important it is to prepare for these two questions from the start and be so good at them by the exam is the results that we've had. Now, these rows, um, this is information from the exam board. And what it does is it tells us as a college what our average score was for this particular question. And it gives us a comparison with the national averages, all the students that took this exam. And it shows us how we fared. And I've just shown you the last three years results. So 2021, question 11, we got on average 7.69 out of eight marks. The national average was 6.05 out of eight marks, which means we got 20% higher grades than the national average. The question 12, which is the skeletal and the muscular system one, you can see we, we got an average 11.53 out of 14. The national average was only 7.67 out of 14. So we got 30% more on average than other students. And you can see the same is true of 2022 where well, we got 18 and 22% more, and particularly true in um, 2023, when we got 30% um, more than the national average um, on question 11, and 40% more, so we nearly got an average of full marks on this question. And that's because from the start, we practice and we get really good at knowing how to do those analyses. So when you go through your work on learning aim D, the skeletal system, and learning aim E, which is the muscular system, we will be applying not only that knowledge for short answers, but very much preparing for the movement analysis questions.